Yay, we've got Rod Suskin back with us today and again, astrology part two. <laughs> Love to talk about more for sure. <laughs> so if you were to go and your first um, um, like experience with astrology could often be, oh, I'm a Virgo, I'm a Pisces and this is me. Mm. But it's so much more than that. It is so much more than that. You know, the, the idea of doing that was only invented in 1931 and astrology is 3,000 years old. Mm. Um, but what's interesting about that, so originally in astrology, the sun sign was used to talk about the soul. Right. And as the, from the 18th century onwards, people started believing less and less in the soul. And by the time you got to the modern era, and people didn't have any um, spiritual connection to themselves or astrology. Now we have sun signs talk about the ego. I'm this, I'm that, this yes, is me. Yes. And I think it's quite an, a good reflection of our culture. <laughs> and so that's why... Most people find that there is truth in sun signs, mm. but it's far from the whole truth. So sun signs represent an essence in you mm. that, um, that you'll share with all other Virgos, other members of your same sign. And there's certain core, let's call them issues, they're not necessarily problems, mm. but that all people of that sign will always be addressing. So like um, Virgos, people think that Virgos are always trying to address being perfect and mm -hmm. that isn't what their issue mm -hmm. is. Virgos are always trying to be helpful and they're always trying to find ways that they can be useful and helpful. But every Virgo is going to do that in a completely different way, so much so that you might not even see the similarity. Mm -hmm. So astrologers concentrate also on the time and place that you were born. Because think about it, the sky looks completely different every minute and if you go somewhere else, it looks completely different. And your first question would be, were you born in the northern or the southern hemisphere? Well, it's one of the many ingredients, because the sky turns upside down in the southern hemisphere. Um, that in itself doesn't have any special meaning. In the end, it really lets us orient ourselves. We can see what's where and how we are related to everything mm -hmm. else in the universe. Mm -hmm. And then we're able to talk about you personally. So we use what's called the rising sign or the ascending sign which has got a lot more personal information about who you are. Please explain that just in, in as far as the, so, the stars are concerned. So if you think about it, we, when we watch the sun rise, it rises mm -hmm. in the east. And the sun would be in a particular sign. So say if the sun was in Virgo, in Aquarius, or in Pisces like it is now, when the sun is rising in the east, we can say there's the sun in the east and there's Pisces in the east. Mm -hmm. So as the day goes by, even though the sun moves on, one after another, one of the signs will rise in the east right. for a couple of hours, then the next one. So the first so on. one, or the one that the rises one that was at rise, the time exactly, of the And right. seen from there, the one sitting in the east. Think about how all cultures look to the east for inspiration. It's the source of light. Mm -hmm. So as the source of light, it's what's very important. Astrology is really all about light. So much so that in Vedic astrology, the word for astrology, which is Jyotish, means the science of light. Right. In the West, the idea of astrology was that consciousness as light descends from the infinite divine realm to the earthly realm through the movements of the planets. So we see moving lights and it's the transmission of light slowly mm -hmm. down to earth. The moon is very bright, so that's got a very important, mm -hmm. strong effect on mm -hmm. us. And the moon sign is even more important than your I sun was sign. Ask you. <laughs> because that, you know, is a very strong connection to mm. its light. And that shows how we respond and react to things and how we go through our everyday existence. So the three basic things, really basic things mm. about astrology, it's not just where, you know, your sun sign was, yeah. Virgo, Pisces or Gemini, but it's where was your moon or where was your moon and yeah. also what is your rising. Exactly. So what, then, which part, can you just explain which part is your personality and what you project to the world and your soul? So your personality is the rising sign. And the personality is, we use to like exist in the world. So that's where most people are wrong. And about their signs, yes. yeah. So we put our personality in the world, we try and control it. it. A lot of it's already there by the time we're conscious, but we control it, we control what we look like, we've got certain motivations, we act on the world. Mm -hmm. And so people see all of that and what they're seeing is our rising sign. Not so, your sun sign. No, if you guess someone's sign, it's probably their rising sign that you've guessed because you're seeing it in the world. The moon is how they respond to the world. So we also see that. 
someone bursts into tears at a moment's notice. <laughs> someone is very haughty and doesn't seem to react. And all of that mm. comes from the moon. We reaction. share the same moon. We do. So we do burst into tears at I a know, it's notice. a Pisces moon. And oh, each one yeah. of my children have Pisces moon. <laughs> so if there's an emotion in the house, everyone's <laughs> crying. <laughs> exactly. But it's helpful to understand. Yes. Because it also in that case, sometimes it helps us not take ourselves too seriously. Right, right. And then the sun sign is an essence. It's almost like only you and the people who know you kind of really see that about you. And so that when you meet someone that you start a relationship with, you meet their rising sign. Mm -hmm. And as you engage with them emotionally, you're seeing their moon sign. And eventually... Three years later, I believe. Right. <laughs> you see their sun sign, you think, this isn't the man I married. Yes. But of course it is. Yes. So what, would, what can somebody expect when they go for a reading? Because I'm sure a lot of people yeah. now want to go and do their reading. Well, the important thing is they need their birth time and the place that they were born. A lot of people don't have the birth time and maybe need to do a little bit of research and so on to find out. But you out. ask questions if you think they're on the cusp. Exactly. If they don't have a clear birth time, I can help find it out by asking about dates in their lives. And then the reading itself, the first time, an astrologer will give you an overall perspective of your life, like the mirror, usually much more information than you're expecting, but lets you see how you behave and how you respond. So it's just like the mirror. Once you see that, mm. you've got the power to make choices. It's easier said than done because our responses seem so built in. But you know, the human journey is all about becoming more conscious. Mm. So the more conscious you become, the more you can try and use your personality to help you. Mm. You can't change your personality, but you have the conscious power to choose how you go about your life. So you're so, talking about your nature and then your quiet nature. Exactly. Exactly that. So we call it your essential nature and your accidental nature. In okay. um, so accidental it just happened that way. <laughs> and so you, you get to see very clearly how those work, what kind of patterns you tend to fall into um, so that you can try and not go down that road. We don't necessarily change ourselves, yeah. but because we've got consciousness, we can say, well, I'm not going to go down that road, even if I feel like it. Right. And then we, that's how we avoid repeating old mistakes. So the chart lets you see that very clearly. And so it gives you a sense of why do I do the things that I do? Why does that kind of stuff happen to me? Mm -hmm. And also, how do I accept myself better? Mm. You know, we get told you should do that and you must do that. And you're a child, you've got to have a job that earns money. And all these should, should, shoulds all the mm -hmm. time. So people lose a sense of what comes naturally to them mm -hmm. and what they like. Mm. So astrology helps you remember that because, of course, it's familiar. Mm. Most of the things you like, you've liked since you're a little child. So, for example, you could have parents that will tell you you need to become a doctor, you need to earn so much money, this is what life's about, exactly. you know, this is what it needs to look like, but deep inside you're a completely free spirit. Yeah. You don't want to wear shoes, you don't want to comply to rules, you want to rebel. So if you do a reading, you might understand exactly why exactly. because this is who you are but it will also guide you into potential career paths that well, will suit your nature that's exactly the point so while we're able to say to that person look none of the things that a doctor needs to be happy in the world exist in your chart least of all the talent for medicine yeah. <laughs> which won't be there if they don't have the urge to be a doctor but as you say by identifying who they are and connecting that mm. to how they operate in the world it becomes easier for us to choose career paths. That's, and the career path is never you should do this. It's mm -hmm. more like these are the types of things that will make you feel satisfied, that will make you feel like this is worth doing every day or it's meaningful to you. Because mm -hmm. astrology's point of view is not that it should make you money. Astrology's point of view is that if you're true to who you are, you will succeed the most. That's just the bottom yeah. line. Your only option is to be who you are. Mm -hmm. The better you understand that, the better your choices will be, and the more you'll make the choices that actually suit your nature. For me, this is an absolute tool for self-awareness. Th I've always thought it's the most important tool for us because it's so clear and mm. it's scientific. It's not based on what the astrologer thinks. Yeah. And that was very important to the ancient people who had a very clear sense that if someone claims to have a mysterious power, how would you know? Mm. They could say anything and you're obliged to believe them. Correct. So astrology comes from a rigorous method. Mm. You know, you go to a different astrologer, they'll tell you more or less the same thing. So there's such method in it that it's a science. It's not exactly the same type mm. of science we use today. But it's a science, an established body of knowledge that uses repeatable, rigorous methods to get its results. 
I think, you know, when I started getting interested in astrology and numerology and anything else, I want to know all about it now. <laughs> and I found it impossible. It was yeah. impossible for me to do that with astrology because the more books I read, the more confused I became yeah. and the more I knew what I didn't know. Exactly. So that's why you run a course. I do. It's such a deep subject. Thinking about the fact that it's 3,000 years old explains mm. that. So the course I run, like most courses in the world, takes three years to complete. I know. Your students have been complaining to me about yes, I, how difficult it is I, and how much homework they have. Absolutely. <laughs> my, my attitude is that ever since the 17th century, when it fell out of universities, in order for people to be responsible astrologers, they must be educated astrologers. Mm. So you get a full university-style education in those three years, where it's demanding, it moves quickly, it builds on other knowledge like history and mathematics and science in the context of astrology, so you don't have to know things that are too different. And, um, and it's challenging, but it's profoundly life-changing because it's like learning a language and then suddenly understanding half the universe that you never understood before. Right. So it really um, mm -hmm. opens people up to a bigger perspective of the world when they study it. So it's demanding. I know they all complain. <laughs> but they keep coming back for more. <laughs> oh, I know that too, absolutely. <laughs> so just to finish off, um, we talked about what to expect when you go into a reading. So you need to know your birth date and the time and place. Hmm. And then uh, in return, so that's what I will then draw the chart, which is really a map of the sky mm -hmm. at the time that you were born. And based on those positions and uh, interactions in the chart, I can talk to you about the different aspects of your life, such as your professional life, your personal life and what kinds of patterns come up there and what your most natural tendencies are. So for example, someone can say, um, will I have children? People ask direct mm. questions all the mm -hmm. time. Astrology won't say yes or no, it will give a probability always. Mm. And so in many cases, for most things, if we know the probability, we know what we can do to change it. Not everything's changeable. Mm -hmm. And no wonder we must talk about karma because that's I'd a lot in the theory. I'd love to have you the back theory. and talk about karma and dharma. Because astrology deals with those things a lot. But the bottom line is in the reading, it gives you a perspective on each different aspect of life and the various likelihoods on the one hand so that you know what to expect and on the other hand so that you can work at what you need to change. I'm going to have to have you back. I'll be back. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's fun. Thanks, Delia.